So we're starting section four of chapter five, comparing ratios. So we're modifying this section a little bit, and we're not going to do the graphing portion. We're just going to do the comparing of ratios. So please write this down, 5.4, comparing ratios. You do not need to copy down the picture. I'm just giving you an example. So remember along the way, if you need to pause the video, please pause the video. When you're ready to move on, just hit play. If you have questions along the way, go ahead and write those down on the side. And I'll also, once in a while, insert a text box if you have questions that you would like to ask. So, comparing ratios. For example, I have a cup of coffee. I got a grande at Starbucks, and it has 330 milligrams of caffeine in it. Well, I want to compare that to a regular cup of coffee. But a regular cup of coffee only has 108 milligrams. So in order to make these ratios equal, I would have to have three cups of regular coffee to equal that one cup of Starbucks Grande. I can also compare that to a can of Red Bull. Each can of Red Bull only has 76 milligrams of caffeine. So I would have to drink about four and a half cup, uh, cans of Red Bull to equal that one cup of coffee. I can also compare this to soda and tea, and I would need to drink seven cans of soda or seven cups of tea to equal that one cup of Starbucks coffee. So this is a way we can compare things, as we can look at how much caffeine is there in one cup of coffee, Starbucks coffee, and compare that to other things. So again, that was just an example. Now we're going to look at how do we actually calculate this. So I need you to copy down everything on this page. So you might want to copy it down, pause the video, copy it all down, and then play the video to understand the steps that I'm taking you through. So example one, comparing ratios with tables. So we're going to compare. You're mixing four drops of flavoring in 12 ounces of water. And then in the other one, you have seven drops of flavoring in 18 ounces of water. So you can see I've made charts down below to make it easier. So here's my 12 ounces of water. So here of my chart, here's the amount of water, the amount of flavor. And then for the other one, here's my other chart. I'm comparing that to 18 ounces of water. So here's my chart, here's my water, here's my flavor. So which one of these has a stronger flavor. Well, the steps to figure that out I have written down here. I want to find the least common multiple to have the same amount of water. So I'm looking at 12 and 18. So what's a common multiple of both of these? And I want the smallest number just to make the math easier. So I can look at 12 times 2 is 24, but I can't get 18 into 24. 12 times 3 is 36. Oh, I can get the 18 into 36. So I know my common multiple for both of these and my least common, so the smallest number is 36. So I'm going to put 36 ounces of water for each of my charts. Okay, now this goes back to what we just did in the last section. If I look at, how do I get from 12 to 36? I need to multiply times 3. So whatever you do to one number, you have to do the other. So I'm going to multiply times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, so I've done the one chart. Now let's do the other chart. 18 times 2 is 36. So let's multiply this times 2. So 7 times 2 is 14. So which one of these, so if you look at the last step, the larger amount of flavor for the same amount of water, so I have the same amount of water, kind of like with my caffeine, um, which one has more flavor? Well, this one has 14 drops of flavor per 36 ounces of water, so that one's going to have more flavor. All right, so now you're going to try one on your own. So copy this entire example down into your notebook, so you might want to copy this down pause the video, and then play again when you're ready to look at what we're doing. So I have the two charts set up for you. So you have eight tablespoons of hot sauce and three cups of salsa. 
and then you have 12 tablespoons of hot sauce and 4 cups of salsa. So you want to find out which is the mildest, not the strongest. So if you can't remember what to do, you can go back, figure out what I just did, and follow that same procedure. When you're finished, go ahead and write down in the text box on the right which one is the mildest. And also in the text box, if you could tell me um, what the ratio is. So also in the text box, give me the ratio for the mildest. Okay, when you're ready to move on, move on. We have one more example. Okay, this is a little different. I want to compare a unit rate. So a unit rate, if you remember from the last section, is per one. So that means per one. So you have a six pound of cat food and it costs, so we have six pounds of cat food, and that's $12.84. And then we have a 16-pound bag of cat food, and that's $33.92. So which bag of cat food is a better buy? So if you look down on the bottom, I have the charts already made out for us. So here's our cost. Here's our pounds for our 6-pound bag of cat food. And then we have our 16-pound bag of cat food. So steps to solve. So I want to find out the cost for one pound by dividing the total cost by the number of pounds. So let me show you how to do that. So I want to divide the total cost. So my total cost for my six pound bag, my total cost is $12.84. And I want to divide that by the number of pounds. That's divided by six pounds. So if I do the math, show my long division. So I'm going to show my long division. Well, you are. So that equals $2.14 per pound. So I'm going to fill in my chart. I have $2.14 for one pound. Okay, now let's do the other one. Do the same procedure. We take my total cost. How much does it cost totally? by how much I'm getting, so 16 pounds. If I do that calculation, I get $2.12. So it's fairly close, so you need to make sure we're doing this carefully. So $12.12 for one pound. So now we can see that the 16 pound bag is a better buy. So when you're ready, we're gonna move on and you're going to do a practice problem. Okay, so you're going to try this one on your own. So I've set the charts up down here in the bottom, so you just need to fill them out, just like we did in the previous slide. So if you need to rewind, go ahead and rewind. So we're looking to see which gum is a better deal. So you have a 30-pack gum that costs $4.83, or a 32-pack that costs $4.96. So again, if you don't remember what to do, go back and watch the last example again. So in the text box on the right, tell me what the better deal is. So I want to know what the cost is and which is better, a 30-pack or a 32-pack. I've also left one more text box on the end for you to put in any questions or anything you want more help with. So if you want to practice more comparing, if you want to practice more of the which is a better buy, please write that into the text box.